After a three-week hiatus, welcome back to PTLE. As always, I'm your host, Alden. Today we're going to be talking about one of the lesser-known PPS stations outside of the local community, KQED. KQED isn't just a PPS station, it's also an organization like most other stations. The organization was founded on June 1st, 1953, and went on air on April 5th, 1954, making it the sixth educational television station in the U.S. The call letters stand for Quad Erat Demonstrandum, a phrase used in mathematics. They spawned an FM radio network in 1969. However, on May 1st, 2006, KQED Incorporated and the KTEH Foundation merged to create the umbrella organization, North Carolina Public Television. This thing was the name never became well known. Due to this, they decided to rename it to KQED Incorporated. KTEH changed their call letters to KQEH sometime afterwards to suit this. KQED has always suffered from funding issues and losing money. They originally broadcast twice a week for only a single hour. This didn't stop money loss, to the point where in 1954, going dark was considered. However, they came up with a solution that became one of the main funding concepts for many PBS stations, auctions. They would take donated items and, well, auction them off, broadcast live with a celebrity host. They were still a tad short of money, but it proved the idea worked enough to use continuously. They don't usually do these anymore due to pledge drives. These were more convenient, as programs could air while it went on, with the viewer just needing to pick up their telephone and dial a number to donate when they wish. KQED is also one of the only PBS stations I know of that broadcasted actual commercials. They did this during 1995 in order to try and bandage some of the constant money loss. Some of KQED's popular programs include a nightly news show, which boomed in the late 60s and 70s. They also controversially broadcast the death row execution of Robert Alton Harris in 1992 the first to be done in California ever since 1967. Ugh, lost the stuff Anywho, let's get on with it. I do not have an exact logo for 1954 until 1974, however, there was an in-credit notice and print logo seen on cameras. The first official logo was seen from 1974 until 1980. I happen to call it the gold KQED in the sky. <laughs> Many criticized this logo, saying it has creepy music and poor quality animation. I personally like this logo, the same way I like WTVS 1978. Actually, let's talk about this for a second. They are both texts zooming around in the sky with synth music in the background. They are very similar. I like them both mainly because they take place in the sky. Other logos that follow this shtick include WQBD from 1975 and WNED from 1983, all of which are admired by me. This next logo may not even be an officially used logo, considering how it's only known to appear on a Maggie Synthavision demo reel. I'm talking about the KQED liquid pipes. I'm not a fan of the animation, but I do like how the logo looks. Now we have station IDs seen from 1977 until 1987. I call them fittingly the KQED Gallery. There are multiple variants of this one, and likely more undiscovered. I will show all the ones found as of yet here. KQED, Channel 9, San Francisco. Don't miss it. A special announcement about sneak previews. The next two Thursdays, you can see Roger Ebert and Gene Siskel's reviews at 8 o'clock on Channel 32, because we'll be right in the middle of the 1982 KQED auction here on Channel 9. And those two editions of sneak previews can be seen on Channel 9 Sunday, June 6th at 11.30 in the morning and Sunday, June 13th at 11 o'clock at night. Presentation of sneak previews on KQBD is made possible through the courtesy of radio station Camel 106 FM. This is San Francisco's KQED Channel 9, television worth watching and supporting. Monty Python's Flying Circus is also discussed Saturday evenings at 10 o'clock with a different show, different loonies, and two weeks from tonight. 
Saturday evening, January 26th, and Friday evening, we bring back the two madcap British comics, Ronnie Barker and Ronnie Corbett, back here on Channel 9. Don't miss them. Now, sneak previews. A visit to the cinema without having to pay. That's what they mean by sneak. Is next, followed by Video West, the People Project, a look at unusual people, an artist who collects mice, and a man who spent 40 years sailing around the world in a sailboat. Channel 9 in San Francisco. KQBD is the non-commercial public television station for the San Francisco Bay Area and operates on Channel 9 by authority of the Federal Communications Commission. The station is owned and operated by KQBD Incorporated, a non-profit corporation which also owns and operates KQBC Channel 32, KQBD FM at 88.5, and San Francisco Focus Magazine. Our mailing address is 508th Street, San Francisco, 94103. Our engineering staff has affiliated more programs at 7 o'clock tomorrow morning, on behalf of the... These are basic, but I do like the announcer's voice. It's also interesting to see the different scenarios and the creative idea to flip the cue to make a 9. Now we have a program ID used in tandem with the previous, see from 1980 until 1988. It's called the Sunrise KQED. I also have an extended variant, seen very scarcely. This logo is very nice looking. When I think of KQED, I think of this logo. This is one of the first PBS logos to use CGI, although it has been debated if it was animated in real life. I can see where they're going, but I digress. This next logo is called the Metal KQED, and it was seen from 1988 until 2001. <laughs> Station ID variant exists. This is member supported Channel 9, KQED, San Francisco. A different station ID variant also exists. Back to the program IDs. In 1995, they updated the music to, uh, let's just say, we'll be revisiting us in the future. A production of KQED, San Francisco. This logo is the birthplace for the music that would become synonymous with the station's logos. People seem to like it, but I think they should change it. Like, really need to change it. It's getting really annoying at this point. I know it's famous pretty much, but come on, make different music. At least remaster it from the cheesy MIDI sounding instruments. I'd say that's enough babbling on the topic, so on to the next logo. This is the KQED Radar, and it was seen from 2001 until 2006. A production of KQED San Francisco. This logo really doesn't fit with the music. I don't really like this logo either. The aesthetics don't really mesh well with me, and the music just kind of makes it worse. Next up, we have the KQED Ripples, seen from 2006 until most likely 2014. This logo can be seen four ways. The first two have navy blue letter boxes on the top and bottom, and can read either San Francisco or production on the bottom. This program is a production of KQED. These last two do not have litter boxes and reproduction underneath. One is darker and has high definition zooming in. A KQED television production. The following KQED production was produced in high definition. This one thankfully doesn't use the music as much. The animation here is pretty good for 2006 and I like the cinematic feel of the letterbox versions. The following logo is this one, which was seen from February 1st, 2010 until 2013. I like to call it the KQED Techno Rings. There are two other versions. One reads production, and the other is slightly modified to have HD next to the KQED text. A KQED television production. The following KQED production was produced in high definition. He should have used this for longer. The music actually fits quite nice with the animation. Now this is probably my favorite logo from KQED. I call it the Colorful Spinning Circles, and it's been seen ever since 2012. There are three color variants, each with a subset of variants. The first section is blue-toned. There are four versions of this, with the main difference being in the text underneath. The first says production, the second says public television, one says presents, and one is blank.
The second section has one logo. It is teal and green shaded, and used for KQED science. The final section is used mostly for KQED arts. It is orange and pinkish red shaded. Again, the main variations are in the bottom text. Two versions have arts below. One has the website on the bottom. There are also two textless variants. One is akin to the blue tone version, and the other is a station ID. I adore this logo. The colors look really nice, and I'm glad they still use this logo today. However, we still have two more logos to look at. This one is called the KQED Rays, and it has been seen from 2014 to 2015. Pathetic. This logo sucks. It looks horrid, and the Rays are an eyesore. I'm glad this logo was only used for a year. The last logo for today is this, the KQED Glass Panes. It's been seen ever since 2018. I like this logo a lot. It's very modern and stylish, and the music sounds very nice as well. Well, there you have it. All the logos from KQED. I uh, hope you enjoyed this episode. This episode suffered <laughs> major delays. I'm really sorry about that. Um, but yeah, go on and like, subscribe, and share. And uh, have a great night, my agents. Yeah.